Hello everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel. So it's been a couple of weeks. If you remember last time uh, out, we were just working on resolving some of the issues with Panagali and come to a natural break point with that. So today's video is all about putting a 916 engine together. Um, so I'm gonna break this series down into a few steps because what I've got at the moment is a pile of bits. So today's video is gonna be about checking over what I've got what parts are missing, what parts I need, therefore, uh, so that we can get it going in one run. Um, I'm not intending to paint the cases because they're original and they're in reasonable condition and I'd like to leave them that way. They're a nice set of 94 cases because it's uh, off a 94 bike. So I'm gonna try as much as possible to keep it in original condition, unless of course on closer inspection it looks bad, in which case, in which case I'll probably do something slightly differently. We'll then uh, go through and make a judgment call on the head conditions and cylinders and whether they need to be stripped back as well and cleaned. Um, we'll look at the wear on everything so that we can make decisions on whether to replate, say, like the cylinders, etc. Um, look at the rocker arms, see if any of the chromes are worn away, so I need replacements in there. So, in general, it's just a what you would do if you just stripped the engine down and were looking to check everything before you then started to put everything back together. Now there's some stuff that I know I'm gonna need straight off. I'm gonna need new main bearings, I'm gonna need new gearbox bearings because the cases are from an unknown source. Um, I'm gonna need new big end bearings because the engine um, was run for a season before this stripped down, so they're, they're out of the way. I'm gonna need a gasket set. So there's some stuff straight off the bat I know I'm gonna need. So what I'll do is I will check for everything. I'll show you that process. I'll pull together the list of the parts that I'm gonna need and then I'll get those ordered up. So hopefully for the next video, we can get to the point where we just start putting the engine back together. Okay, so let's get into that then. Okay, so first off what we've gotta do is just look at the cases and work out what's missing or what's needed. So these were a second hand set that come to me. So straight away, new gearbox output shaft seal is gonna be needed. And what I've noticed is all of the engine bolts are missing. So uh, there's just one holding the cases together, I think. Yeah, there's none around the, oh, there's one down here as well. So I'm gonna need a full set of engine bolts, but I've got plenty of those lying around. Let's just pop the cases apart. Okay, that bolt wasn't held on. <laughs> okay, so looking inside the cases, looks like we've got all of the gearbox bearing uh, hardware in place, but I'll be ordering new output bearing, it's really notchy, new lay shaft holding bearing, the opposite end of the gearbox shaft, output shaft, sorry, and then the clutch clutch bearing, get a new main, missing the main here so we need a second main and then I'll get the timing shaft bearings as well so we'll have a full set of bearings replaced. We've got the sump plug in place which is good. What I've just noticed as well is we're missing the relief valve for the, um, so the earlier engines they're uh, oil pressure relief was in the engine block not on the pump so with that missing I'm gonna need an oil pressure relief valve as well so let's just drop those bits down also on the oil circuit we're missing the strainer so we're gonna need a strainer and we're missing the uh, two oil pipe unions that will go to the cooler I think in terms of everything else um, we're also missing the strainer cap. Now luckily I've got an engine spare that I can use for that. And we'll need a timing shaft seal as well. Let's put that to one side. Externally here, everything else we've covered off. Okay. Okay, we've got full gearbox set up. Nothing's missing from there as it stands at the moment. Got all the shims that were fitted in the existing cases, so that'll just need a good clean up and putting back in. 
and then the crankshaft which was lightened as you'll see there so this was all lightened and balanced when I last had the engine done so this will just need a good clean out and then a new set of shells for the H-beam rods and then one lay shaft for well, sorry one timing belt shaft so we're all okay on that piece that brings us over to the pistons and cylinders you can see the bike was running actually quite rich um, so that's that's interesting not much scoring so they should be usable need a new set of rings new set of rings again what I'm going to do now is just measure up what size we've got in the cylinders just to make sure whether they're within acceptable wear limits or if we need to get them replated so I've got a bore gauge set to a datum 94 millimeters which is what these cylinders should be measured the service the service limit for the ovality is within spec what I need to do having measured the bore is now measure the skirt width of the pistons to work out what clearance we've got because that's the that's the really important clearance measurement that we need so I'm just going to measure those now okay when measuring those clearances the clearance between the piston and the cylinder is too large so you should have a service limit of about 0.12 um, it should be 0.03 to 0.04 but I mean I mean there's visually quite a lot of movement in there but we've got a clearance of 0 0.22 0 0.21 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the barrels away to get replated so these are nicosil plated and you can get them redone so that's another job that we need to do before we can chuck the engine back together. Checking the selector forks. I know that this was actually only replaced the last season of the racing it had, so you can see nice sharp teeth, no, no rounding off. So we're good from the fork selector point of view, because it was new. Standard primary gear. Teeth are all in good condition. Uh, actually, no, hang on fire. Ah. Now, interestingly, there is a lot of pitting on the front face of these teeth, which there does not appear to be. Oh no, there is some down here as well. All right, so we might have to source an alternative primary gear and let's just check that that's not dirt that's stuck on there if there was a lot of backlash in the gear train assembly no, that is definitely damaging the teeth I don't know if you can see that there so we've got all this damage just here and you can see it just starting to build again there then it's quite bad one two three four teeth which you certainly wouldn't want to carry into a track stroke race engine there's another tooth there as well so we're going to need a replacement primary gear I've got a few spare of them one good starter motor clutch push rod a um, little bit of wear on there might just need a light bit of emery cloth across there so you can see where it's just been rubbing inside the clutch shaft and we'll replace those seals as well so two phase clutch cover uh, sorry two phase alternate cover alternate is okay no play in the water pump It's a little bit tatty, but we we'll need to sort out the connections for the um, generator when we do that. 
start a drive gear it's all in good condition main timing wheel again no visible damage on there primary drive now this is interesting because there appears to be no reciprocal damage from what we found on the primary gear itself so that's usable flywheel mount and starter wheel so the sprags in good condition but what's of slight concern is there's a quite a lot of wear around the start wheel so it might identify an alternative one of those so we'll put that as scrap as well timing gear drive again teeth look okay rotor for the generator again it's the full size standard one but is in good condition. Timing gear drive pulleys, standard steel ones, no damage on those. Timing belt pulleys or rollers, no issue there, but we will replace both those 12 mil bolts, but that's okay for now. Temperature sender body, all intact, just needs a bit of a clean through, which we'll do old strainer body this will need a good clean clean down before we use it but we've got one there generator cover one careful owner we shall source another one of those so that'll be scrap as well one early oil pump no pressure relief so just to show you the difference later pumps had the pressure relief sat as part of the pump body whereas on the early ones it was inside the cases then one full set of internal bolts so it's got a couple of the pieces that were missing off the other cases so I've got all of the bolts for the engine there um, the oil pressure relief and spring is in there as well so we're good from that point of view and some used external case bolts head bolts okay so first the heads horizontal it's had a oil leak so we'll be doing the seals on the camshafts um, it's going to need a full clean up full rebuild but the most important piece I want to check before we just finalize off what we need is I'm going to take off the covers take the cams out and just check the condition of the rocker shafts so let's do that Okay, so this first one is there's signs of wear that you might not be able to pick up on the camera due to the lighting but there's signs of wear but none of the chrome has broken through you can see this on this uh, opening arm you can just see that there's wear on the chrome but the chrome's not broken and then on the closing arm again some wear but not not broken through what I'll do is I'll look for all my spares just to see if I've got slightly better condition arms to put back in but there's nothing nothing there that really particularly worries me you'd get another you'd get another season's worth of running out of that right let's do the other head the vertical head I'm just gonna pop off both the cams and the cam covers and have a look at the rockers as well same thing again it's gonna need a good clean up valves being relapped etc etc so everything else is pretty much a given so let's just get these off okay so again just pop the cams out had a look at the rocker arms no no break through the chrome covering which is really good so just going to drop the cams loosely back in again and we'll uh, we should finish off um, just to really briefly recap 
all new bearings for the block, new big end bearings for the crank, new piston rings for both pistons. Uh, I'm going to need to replate the cylinders. We may need to shim the cases, so we might need more shims in there. Um, and then coming down through here, we're going to need a new new timing end bolt. Uh, sorry, nut, which will hold all of those in place. These parts here are waste, so primary gear is going to be scrapped, start gear is going to be scrapped, alternate cover for the timing tool is also going to be replaced. We're going to need a new clutch cover seal and then on the heads, all of the rocker cover, uh, rockers are okay but I'll try and source some that got slightly less wear on them if possible. Then I'm going to need new seals for the camshafts, new camshaft nuts, new camshaft seals, camshaft nuts. I'm missing this cover because I used it on my race bike, so I just need to order an alternate one of them. And then a full head gasket set so that we can put the engine back together. Okay, so thanks for watching that first video on the 916 build. Um, the next video probably won't be on the 916. It'll be back on the 748 where I've just ordered a few bits and pieces for um, putting it to bed for the winter and getting it ready for next season. So. As I said when I went through some of the parts, I've got to send a few bits and pieces away to make sure that they're brought back up to spec so that they're reusable and in good condition. So cylinders got to go away, don't know how long that's going to take. That might be three to four weeks, which is going to run it into Christmas, which means I probably won't get them back to the new year. What I might do in the intervening period is strip the heads, clean everything in there and get them built back up so that I might, might be able to fit something in before, before the Christmas period. but. I'm really basically going to be in a position where I can build the bottom end and get everything ready but I'm going to be hampered by waiting for those cylinders to come back. So hope you enjoyed that quick overview of how I work out what I need to do for the engine. Just a quick and dirty pricey. Um, obviously as I start stripping things down we might find out more pieces are needed or more parts but I'm pretty confident knowing the condition of the engine that we should be reasonably okay from this get-go um, so thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video chuck us a like any comments or questions stick them down below and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel would really welcome you as a subscriber and there is plenty more content to come that's it for now thanks for watching cheers then bye